Welcome back to the second part of the AC analysis of a buck converter. Now, first things first, if we take a look at this table here, this table is located at the appendix portion of the Texas Instruments document I mentioned in the pre previous uh, video. And it gives us a list of devices we can use to make a buck converter, uh, along with some important parameters. Now, like I said, the uh, ramp voltage is really dependent on what device you use. So the one I, I will be using today is the TPS 4200. And this uses the equation VCC divided by 20 minus 0 0.15 volts. And the error amp pull is 300 hertz. Voltage reference is point, about 0.7 volts. Now, if we come over here, as promised, here is my buck converter example. I have an input voltage of 48 volts, a output voltage of 18 volts, and an output current of 1.8 amps. Uh, here is my inductor, output capacitor, and the ECR of that capacitor, output resistor to give me that current. Now, let's see here, VCVS, and what that stands for is a voltage controlled voltage source. And what this is in our circuit is the modulator. So now first we calculate V ramp using this equation. V ramp is, well, VCC, my VCC is 48 volts. So 48 divided by 20 minus 0.15, you get 2.25 as your V ramp. And for your modulator gain, it is V in divided by V ramp. So 48 divided by 2.25 gives me 21.33. And that is what this value is right here. Now next, let's take a look at the op amp model. Now my op amp model consists of uh, two voltage controlled voltage sources. Now this first one gives me a voltage amplification of 10K. So just a like an op amp giving me a high gain. Uh, the second one here gives me a negative one, so it inverts it. And what this uses is uh, this 300 Hertz is the error amp pull uh, mentioned in the table. And our comp, which is R7 here, is uh, one kilo ohm, which is fixed for this model. And in order to size this capacitor here, you do you use this equation and you should get 531 nanofarads. And if we take a look up here now, this is my compensator. This is my voltage divider. So my output voltage would be coming in through here, um, divided by these two. And it is sized based off of your uh, reference voltage. These RC values here uh, can be calculated using the equations I mentioned in the previous uh, video. Pretty straightforward. Now, let's take a look at the frequency response. So I already had it open here. Now the gray, uh, the gray lines is my compensator. Uh, the neon green shows my full loop. Uh, frequency response and the maroon is my power stage. Now the compensator is showing the characteristics that we were expecting. It starts off with a pole, so a negative slope here. It flattens out due to a zero and then it slopes upward 20 dB per decade uh, due to another zero, flattens out again because of a pole and then go a uh, negative slope now due to another pole. Um, and to check the stability of my circuit, let's first take a look at this. So we put a cursor on uh, the full loop, the body plot of the full loop, which is this neon. We set y equal to zero. And what this means is that it is at zero dB gain here. 
what we do next is grab another cursor go to the phase of your full loop and you want to go to that exact frequency so negative one uh the phase here at this frequency when my body plot is at zero dv is negative 24 uh, 124.98 and uh, you add 180 degrees to that, you should get about 50, 50, 50 degrees. Uh, and this is what my phase margin is, which is pretty good because a, uh, I believe a critically damped fa uh, for a phase margin is about 60. So this is not too bad. Uh, next, if we want to take a look at the gain margin, we first come to the phase of the Bode plot. And we set this to negative 180. We grab our second cursor. Make sure you are on your full loop body plot. And we enter the corresponding frequency points here. Cursor B. All right, sorry, negative 180. Here, let's try that again. So you go to your body plot, go to the phase, enter negative 180. Okay, there. Now we go to our magnitude, enter the same frequency, 30.2, and there we go. Here is our gain margin. Now our gain margin is the amount of uh, dBs away from the zero dB point. So right now, my wiggle room um, from becoming unstable is 24.65 dBs away, which is pretty good as well. And this is the frequency response of my closed loop system. So pretty successful. Now let's take a look at the transient. Now, here is the open loop of a buck, uh, buck converter, right? There's no compensator, no modulator, nothing. It is just open. Uh, same exact values, right? The co uh, my RLCs are all the same. ESR is the same. And all I'm doing here is powering this MOSFET with a PWM of a, a set to 40 kilohertz like so using these guys now if we want to take a look at the transient we just go analysis transient two milliseconds is perfectly fine here v out is take a cursor about 17.89 and as i mentioned earlier i wanted oh, i was aiming for about 18 volts so it's not not bad uh, my output current is about 1.77. I was aiming for 1.8. So still not bad, right? Now let's take a look at the closed loop. So this is the closed loop uh, transient model of my buck converter. And it may look complicated, but it is consisting of all the components I mentioned in the first video. Uh, my open loop system is here including the modulator here. And my compensator is located here, uh, type three compensator, right? So we have our open loop system. Uh, output voltage comes out here, connecting to this, and it is fed into this voltage divider here. My reference voltage is 700 millivolts or 0.7. And the output voltage after being scaled down is compared to the voltage uh, reference. And if that increases, so if the error coming out of this uh, comparison increases, that means that my output voltage is not is too low. It's not giving me what I want. So what that does is that it increases uh, my control voltage or error voltage increases and it is compared to my ramp voltage here. 
So this comparator or my modulator compares the ramp to my control voltage. And if that increases, then my the duty cycle that comes out of the modulator, uh, it increases as well. So modulator spits out a new duty cycle, a new square wave, controls this MOSFET, and this MOSFET will dictate um, what your output would look like. So because this increases, this stays open longer, it gives me a, a greater output voltage, and the duty cycle, um, after this is fixed, after it gets to the point where you want it to be, the modulator will uh, give you back your regular duty cycle. And this is the regulation I was talking about. So let's take a look at the transient of this model. So the transient here. We take a cursor, look at V out. V out is about 18.33, which is looking better. And I out, output current is 1.82 or 1.8. So this is uh, giving us the values we want. And let's just take a look at the current through the inductor. Now the current through the inductor is giving us this zigzag characteristic, which is exactly what we wanted because this shows that it is uh, operating in continuous conduction mode. Okay. Let's see. And additionally, if we want to take a look at just like the overall efficiency. Um, so this is our open loop, back to our open loop response. Here, this is the rise time, right? 10% to 90%. And you can see it takes a lot longer, right? And then it overshoots up here before becoming steady. And if we take a look at the closed loop system, so the rise time is a lot shorter, right? And you can tell there might be a little bit of overshoot, but it is not nearly as much as the open loop system. So overall, the uh, closed loop system is better in, in efficiency and um, better in efficiency and better in regulation, right? Uh, it just gives us what we want. And one last look at my average model. Uh, yeah, overall, not too complicated. Um, really take a look at the documents I mentioned in the previous video if you really want to learn. Um, yeah, and thanks for watching my video.